when it came to the making the change, I had to think, do I chop my dick off or do I keep it? And the choice was, I keep it. Meet Ian Towney. They won't look at my wrinkles. <laughs> They'll be too busy looking at the diamonds. <laughs> Owner of one of London's busiest arcades, Bourbon Hanby Antiques. With over 1,500 customers each week, it's an ever-shift in Aladdin's cave of jewels, collectibles, and curiosities. Ian's a homemaker, treasure hunter, and salesman. 2,000 hefty. <laughs> Together with his team, ah, they live a hectic life. Bravo, you'll get fat. Listen to what those people are saying. Yeah. Of bartering, buying, selling, and partying. This is antiques as you've never seen them before. 25. 25. She died. It's cheap. For all that pleasure it's going to bring you. <laughs>It's 6am and a typical start to a busy day for Ian and Les. Well, everybody tells me I'm hyperactive, but I don't think I am. I'm just over-energetic. I get up in the morning, I get on my gym machine, I do my cross trainer. Darling, you must go down and get my smoothie ready and make sure you do it properly with no bloody lamps in it. So I hoover a room or two, do a bit of dusting. Right, so I just knock up uh, the, the five fruits. We have different fruits every day, usually whatever's in season. At the moment we've got nice plums and we've got some apricots. You know, I've been with my husband 39 years. He's had a rough time with me, a bloody rough time. I was a spoiled bitch. I lived in the Dorchester for six months of my life. I've always been quite lucky in my life. Along comes Ian, who's absolutely outrageous. And I don't know, it, it just sort of clicked. I love him, I adore him, I worship him. He would never, ever let me down. The shop is very busy. We have clients from every walk of life. They're lovely, they're fascinating, they're intriguing. And you know, I help them out marital problems. I hate to say this, sexual problems, you know, husband and wife cheating on each other. I've had husband coming in front door and pushing the wife through the back door because I don't want them to cross because each of them have got a lover in hand. Uh, we're very lucky. Uh, he does all the things I hate. Um, um, cesarean for Friday. Oh. You, uh, it's impossible. I look after paperwork. I look after the advertising. I look after the running of the building. I look after the rents. Salesmen are people, they're great at selling things, but they're absolutely hopeless at paperwork. Now this one actually has the Sitzendorf mark. They know me very well in Chelsea and Westminster. I'm always going to see people who are dying over there. Okay, it's not a problem. Don't bother to pay for it. And that can be the same, 1,000 pounds. 2,000 you have two. In these tough economic times, success doesn't always come easy for Ian and Les. We're working more hours than we've ever worked. We work full seven days a week. You know, we've got security to pay for, we've got staff to pay for. And if we didn't work that seven days, we wouldn't, uh, to be honest, we wouldn't survive. They say to me, you are the jewel in the crown of Chelsea. Yes, I am the jewel in the crown of Chelsea. I've worked hard at it. I have an arcade to support, you know. Not all my tenants can pay me on time, so I have to have the finance to do it. Looking for about 15 to 18. <gasps> Addison, 15 to 18. The last one was larger than this, and we sold it for how much? 20. Eight. Yeah, that's what she's, but they're willing to do offers. And it's so bloody effing I ugly. think it's beautiful. It has a certain je ne sais quoi about it. Behind Ian's success is his collection of staff, who are every bit as unique as the antiques they sell. I'm Michelle and I'm an apprentice gemologist. Gemologist. I'm Michelle and I'm an apprentice gemologist. I'm sort of like a protégé now for Ian. For me, the nicest thing in the shop really is all of Ian's diamonds and things, which I get to wear. This was the property of the governor of Thailand. I will probably be selling that for about 16 to 20,000 in that range. 
Isn't it beautiful? Okay. Now you can take it off your neck because you're not keeping it, girl. Mm -hmm. But when Les is in, he tells us both off for encouraging each other to open the champagne. We wait for Les to go out and we watch him on the cameras and then as soon as he's gone out, we pop down to Waitrose and get an extra bottle in or something so he doesn't know. Because when he comes back, he counts them in the fridge and he knows if one's gone. Well, my name's Mark. I'm in security, stroke bodyguard to Ian and Les. Is Claudia around? He's in the office with Les. Could you tell him to listen to what those people are saying? Yeah. Gypsies. Watch your bags. So I used to come in on a regular basis. Like I got a phone call on a Friday from Ian saying, would you like to come and work me full time? I, I, I jumped at the chance. Uh, my name's Richard Lahane. Um, I work here in the Bourbon Antiques Centre with Ian and the rest of the gang here. Pretty much I sell Mantiques. Uh, a lot of toys for boys. I had some other items for the, for the ladies, a glass of white wine, that type of thing. Um, there was another gentleman came in just the other day actually, and we've got a, a lovely miniature Vuitton trunk in the window there. And so he said, oh, that's a beautiful little trunk you've got in the window. How much is it? Go on, scare me. So I went, ah! Leaving his team in charge at the arcade, Ian hits the road to uncover gems in the nation's households. Today, he helps out a self-confessed hoarder. I must say, you have a mass, mass collection of items. Apart from Portobello Road, I've collected since I was about 17, 18. So you've been attracted into the antiques and collecting? Yeah, but mainly just a hoarder. A hoarder? Yeah. So now it's got to get. In. What we'll do is I'll come down with the auctioneer, we'll spend a day here, put it into his categories, list it all, and then we'll take it all away and auction it for you. And hopefully you get a big check at the end of it. Ian's Chelsea-based arcade has attracted many a star shopper, as well as David Miller, who has become firm friends with Ian and Les. Now, we've always had a great time, actually, I must say. It's been um, a great joy to me in the ups and downs of my life, our friendship. David has been with Ian through thick and thin, including a horrific violent robbery in 2005. People shouldn't underestimate you as an easy touch. I mean, I still think of those horrific pictures of you when there's blokes came in with sledgehammers and how instead of cowering in a corner you took them on. These guys are cowards and the moment you attack them you know and you beat them up and pull their balaclava off their face and push your fist into their face and have them going out of there with smashed eyes and smashed jaws you know they can't bear the thought that a queen or a poofter has smashed them up. Back at the arcade it's party time and Ian hosts a champagne bash to unveil his most outrageous item of the week. I have to move this because I need space to show you. Show me. A customer brought them in to Of me. course. Who's a virgin? <laughs> virgin on the ridiculous. <laughs> Very uh, how much? Game. Well, this one, rock crystal, silver, encrusted in jewels. Mm -hmm. How much? 25,000. 25? Oh, cheap, darling. It's <laughs> cheap. It's For all that pleasure it's going to bring you. <laughs> It's the end of a typical day, but the treasure hunt continues.